Welcome to a course on complex analysis. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the concept of differentiation and some formulas and ideologies to find the derivatives of a given function. Let us explore them. We are going to start the concept of derivatives. So, as we have seen the derivative of a real valued function in the course of real analysis, we are just going to extend the ideologies to the complex valued functions. So here f be a function whose domain of definition whose domain of definition contains a neighborhood absolute of z minus z naught less than epsilon of a point z naught. Then the derivative of the function f at z naught is the limit. that is f prime evaluated at z naught this is the notation to denote the derivative of f at z naught is limit z approaches z naught f of z minus f of z naught upon z minus z naught and the function f is said to be differentiable at z naught and actually we say the function is differentiable at z naught whenever f prime evaluated at z naught exists. So you may ask me uh, is there any situation where this limit does not exist actually yes. So here we have some uh, ratio of two things okay we make an actually this f is some uh, f is a mapping which is defined from some subset of complex numbers to the set of complex numbers and uh, here is it not as a fixed point that is chosen in the set of complex numbers and you since this is a fixed one you may treat this uh, psi of z to be z minus z naught. This is one function. And you have another function that we may consider as phi of z to be f of z minus f of z naught. We don't know what this value f of z naught is. But with the help of this, uh, we have another function. So, we, uh, the ratio of these two functions we uh, take like this. And now we are taking limit to this ratio of these two functions. Okay. So, you know the ratio is well defined one whenever z not equals z not. If, it is, if z equals z not, then this ratio is not well defined. Now, we have a function. To this function, we are taking a limit. If the limit exists, that is going to be the value of the derivative f evaluated at the point z not. Okay. Hope you get the idea of what the derivative means, right? Now, uh, proceeding like uh, by expressing the variable z in definition 1. Actually, this is what we take it as equation 1. So, in this definition, in, we are taking it in another terms. Terms of another variable. So, here I have said this as psi of z. Instead of writing it as psi of z, let us take it as delta z to be z minus z naught, where z and z naught are different. Okay. Now, we can write we can write the definition as uh, 
f prime evaluated at c naught as limit delta z approaches 0 to the function f of z naught plus delta z minus f of z naught upon delta z. Now, here f is defined throughout the neighborhood of z naught that we have assured from the definition of the derivative itself. Right? So, your function is going to be defined in uh, like your function will have a value in the definition uh, in the neighborhood of z naught. Right? And now, if we write delta w as f of z plus delta z minus f of z, then we shall write dw upon dz as limit delta z approaches 0 delta w upon delta z. So, this is another form of the definition of a derivative. Okay. Here we have presented uh, three different uh, definitions like three different forms of the uh, derivative with which now we shall work out a uh, few problems. Okay. So, the problems will start. The first problem that we are going to see is f of z is z squared. Okay. Now, if we decide to go with the definition, this one that is limit delta z approaches 0, del w upon del z, uh, this is going to be equal to limit delta z approaches 0, and this is going to be del z plus delta z whole squared minus z squared upon delta z, right? So, using binomial expansion, we shall write this as z squared plus 2z delta z plus delta z whole squared minus z squared upon delta z. So, by after cancelling z squared, uh, what we have is 2z delta z plus delta z whole squared upon delta z. Now you may take delta z as a common thing in the numerator and after cancelling it, you are going to have 2 times of z plus delta z. And when you make your delta z goes to 0, you are left with only 2z. Okay. Hence, derivative of f is 2z. So the problem that we did is one kind. Okay. Here, the function directly involves uh, z and only the involvement of z is present in it. But when we closely observe it, the z is uh, like, if I write it in another color, that would be better for you people, I hope. Suppose, uh, here, this z is x plus iota y and uh, your f of z may be written as u plus iota times of e. these things are These things we have seen already right but in order to work out this problem we did not require any of these ideologies to bring in and uh, see what was happening okay in the next problem we may be in a need to plug in these ideologies the next problem that we are about to consider is f of z is conjugate of z okay here let us calculate del w upon del z what it is okay so what is del w it is f of z plus delta z minus f of z upon delta z right okay so what is f it is z bar so z plus delta z whole bar minus z bar upon delta z so, using the property of the conjugate of a complex numbers, we may split this as z bar plus delta z bar minus z bar upon delta z. So, this happens to be delta z whole bar upon delta z. Now, we don't know what this delta z is, right? So, and here, what we have to do, we need to calculate limit delta z approaches 0 to this ratio delta w upon delta z. 
so this is what we needed to calculate now we are unsure of from what way delta z approaches zero it may approach from any direction right so if um, suppose <coughs> limit delta z approaches zero delta w upon delta z exists okay and let us take this delta z to be delta x plus iota times of delta y or the order pair delta x comma delta y so let this approaches to origin horizontally so let this approach to origin horizontally horizontally means uh, via delta x comma 0 right so horizontal means what in the x direction it is changing so let us consider this way here what happens your delta z simply becomes delta x and your delta w is also what like this is iota times of 0 and uh, this happens to be simply delta x and delta w is delta x plus uh, iota times of 0 whole bar and that happens to be delta x bar minus iota times of 0 since this is a real part this remains delta x itself okay so thus limit delta z approaches 0 delta w upon delta z is simply limit delta z approaches 0 delta x upon delta x and that happens to be uh, simply limit delta z approaches to 0 to the function 1 and that is 1 okay now if you consider uh, your delta z approaches to the origin vertically that is where 0 comma delta y if it approaches this way then your limit delta z approaches 0 delta w upon delta z that will happen to be limit delta y approaches 0 actually this here it will become delta x approaches 0 okay so this one minus delta y upon delta y and that happens to be simply minus 1 you can just uh, think over it and see what is happening right so we know what is delta w and there we'll have to substitute these things and see what is happening okay remember your delta x and delta y are real quantities a small change in real quantities okay so here delta x is the uh, the change uh, we are we are looking at the uh, change in some complex quantity that will have real and imaginary but delta x is your real quantity and delta y is a imaginary quantity but when you plainly look at uh, delta x and delta y they are real quantities right hope you people understand these things and uh, if you see uh, you are getting a uh, minus 1 here and from this okay like if you consider this as equation 1 and this as equation 2 from 1 and 2 we conclude limits delta z approaches 0 delta w upon delta z does not exist right uh, next we are going to see uh, one more problem that is f of z is absolute of z squared okay here let us consider delta w upon delta z that happens to be f of z plus delta z minus f of z upon delta z right and this is absolute of z plus delta z whole squared minus delta z whole squared upon delta z and this may be written as 
z plus delta z multiplied with z plus delta z whole bar minus absolute of and this may also be written as c z bar upon delta z and using the properties of uh, conjugates of complex numbers we may write this as delta z plus delta z bar minus c z bar upon delta z and this is c z bar plus c delta z bar plus z bar delta z plus delta z delta z bar minus z z bar upon delta z right so this one this quantity gets cancelled and uh, if you see here you are gonna have uh, like from this you will have z bar okay actually here you will have z delta z bar upon delta z plus here you will have only z bar and here you will have delta z whole bar yeah this is the thing that is left to you people right uh, if you proceed from the previous like uh, here um, if you if you approach your delta z either horizontally or vertically then we will have uh, like let me write it out if we approach either horizontally or vertically then we have our delta z bar is simply delta z r delta z bar is minus delta z okay so this is the thing that we have uh, done in the previous one okay this idea we can uh, see uh, therefore we would have delta w upon delta z this quantity as like this one we may have write like this and this is delta z like if we consider the positive sense okay in the first sense then delta z bar is delta z and this happens to be simply z when delta z is approaching in this path and delta w upon delta z would be simply z bar minus delta z minus z okay so from this quantity uh, this will happen when delta z approaches in delta y comma sorry zero comma delta y when we approach in this path this is going to happen okay if uh, <coughs> suppose this limit exists okay suppose limit delta z approaches to zero delta w upon delta z if this quantity exists then uh, the limits like uh, then as delta z approaches zero we must have sorry yeah so we must have z bar plus z and this has to be same as that of z bar minus z so this leads to 2z is 0 this is true only when z is 0 okay thus f of z equals absolute of z square is differentiable only when z is 0 and is not differentiable for z not equal 0 right now uh, okay here we are going to do some more things that is kind of a remark 
okay your f of c equals absolute of c squared may be treated as simply x squared plus y squared plus hydra times of zero okay and from this if you consider your u that is x squared plus y squared and this v is zero so from this you may very well see the partial derivatives del u upon del x del u upon del y and the second order derivatives here also del u del v upon del x del v upon del y and del 2 v upon del x 2 and del 2 v upon del y 2 del 2 v upon del x del y all these partial derivatives exist okay at all points actually this is very important okay here we observe that the partial derivatives exist at all points let me write that down to here we observe that the partial derivatives exist for all points of x and y but the function is differentiable only at one point okay this is some important observation that will help us to understand the concept of analytic function which is to be uh, which is to be seen very soon in this course okay uh, in the upcoming lecture also we are going to continue our discussion on the uh, derivatives and some theorems some problems uh, with which uh, i conclude this lecture thank you